So hi, Women's Rights Podcast. I'm Shane. I'm Glory. Another throwback Thursday, recorded on a Thursday, put out on a Monday. We're there staying, you go. We're it's staying consistent now. Yeah, for, for this a, week for only. Another, <laughs> I was gonna say next week should be fine. This week after this week, completely fine. It's gonna be great. I'm so yeah. excited. Yeah. Um. So yeah, this this week we're we you know we're continuing the motionless and white train, jumping on Infamous mm-hmm. now, their 2012 album, and um. Yeah, we're we're gonna give our thoughts because yeah. that's the that's the point of this. Um, that's kind of what a review is, right? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Um, so a little backstory on the record: there's two different versions out there in the world. There's mm-hmm. the original version that's out, and then there's a deluxe edition. And normally, that would just mean there's more songs on the album, maybe a remix or two, mm-hmm. and uh, you wouldn't think anything of it. But um, they sound completely different um (laughs) the original version of infamous was Mm -hmm. uh was um well the the record was rushed i i I had to do research last night because i've known bits and pieces but i was like yeah i gotta know what the fuck i'm talking about man story yeah Mm -hmm. so it was it was a rushed process you know following up um, creatures. There was a shitload of hype behind the band, so it was kind of like get the record done and let's continue uh, the the hype train. Um, so they they were in the studio for a couple of months. They worked with a bunch of different producers. It actually turns out that uh, one of the producers on the record that was never named um, by Chris. You know they they um, they clashed um, creatively, so it was like his least favorite album process to date because they didn't oh, have. Shit. They didn't have the money or the time to be like, we don't enjoy working together, so we're going to go work somewhere else. He, They just basically had to suck it up and continue working together, Fuck. despite there being multiple different producers on the record. Um, mm-hmm. So there's that, and then the rushed nature of it caused a mix and master that uh, the band is not happy with. And some of the songs on the original version um, mm-hmm. being a little questionable you know Mm. like just in general you know the 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 rush nature of the album definitely comes through so the deluxe edition was an opportunity for the band to um re-record parts of the record as well Mm. as get a fresh mix and master on the album and add you know what would normally come with a deluxe edition which is um extra songs and remixes and the whole kit and caboodle. So Mm. we're going to be talking about the album as if the deluxe edition is the real version and the only version of the album. Um, because I personally, uh, the one that has listened to the album a million times has not listened to it any other way. Um, I turned on the original version of infamous said, wow, this sounds like dookie put on the deluxe edition was like, wow, this sounds better. And that's just the version (laughs) I went with. Um, although, last night i did finally sit down and listen to the original version in full and i was like okay i see how some of these songs like i can pick out which songs were re-recorded versus which ones were pretty much just polished up um like some of them sound just like they do on here with a with a cleaner um cleaner mix so um i didn't hate it as much as i thought i did um Mm -hmm. But the the first handful of tracks on there are rough, man. Um, yeah. So that's that. So just to set the record straight, the deluxe edition is the edition we're talking about. But they're the same songs at their core. So um, same songs with a couple new songs. Yeah. Three remixes. I mean, what what, what don't you? What want more could that? you ask for? It's it's more right? emotionless content. I mean, I think that's what everyone requested honestly they said we want more motionless content that's what i asked for this album specifically (laughs) that's what i asked for um Mm -hmm. so i think i think this is my favorite motionless album with no skips on it don't look at me like that okay (laughs) um i there's just something about it you know like the the creatures is a great introduction to the band and and what they were doing um you know with the eps and with the first record it was very much just metalcore that was horror ish influence spooky horror core uh metalcore um yeah and a lot of breakdowns this record 
um this record was more so like the laying the groundwork for where the band wanted to go in terms of not just being your traditional metalcore band i mean chris even said at the time like we didn't want to turn into a stale metalcore band so that's why you know we put this album together this is kind of where we want things to go show that we can do things that aren't just breakdowns um Mm -hmm. You know, in, inspired by the likes of um, Manson and and Rob Zombie versus just the the metalcore bands of the time. So, um, there's plenty of breakdowns on the record, um, mm-hmm. but there are you know slower cuts um, and just you know lots of lots of different sounds that all, in my opinion, come together to create a cohesive idea. Yeah, um, yeah, I agree. But they're not just, you know, there's not just a breakdown in every single song, which I'm okay with. I say my favorite with no skips because next week we'll get into that. I think that there's a gigantic skip on that record, uh, Reincarnate, that uh, might be an unpopular opinion of the fans. But we'll 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 unpack that next week. But we're we're diving into my two favorites in their discography between this and next week. Um mm-hmm. But this is my favorite with no skips. I feel like the the slower cuts on the record wind up uh, again being some of my favorites. Um, mm-hmm. But overall, I think the album is phenomenal front to back, and I count Fatal as the closer, even though technically Infamous is the closer. Is the cl- yeah yeah. I count Fatal as the closer because it feels because as I said, I finally listened to the original version. Uh, front to mm-hmm. back last night and i heard infamous as the closer i'm like yeah this is fine it mm-hmm. it definitely ties everything up but fatal is just so big sounding and mm-hmm. and ties it uh, ties the record together better it does, than, yeah, it fits. than yeah. infamous in my opinion and i would even say like the last the last two songs sick from the melt and fatal both um you know kind of give this downward trajectory on the record mm-hmm. that i've always thought has tied up together nicely um black the mask um mm-hmm. what a fucking opener that song's actually it's fucking crazy yeah I, do, I really like that song yeah that song goes fucking bonkers um mm-hmm. devil's night and america i mean america was one of the one of the songs that really i mean i would say devil's night and america actually were the two songs that like you know put put this put started to really put the band um on the map and mm-hmm. also got um, some fans of the record that were fans of the band in their old form that were turned off from the band be like, we'll, we'll tune back in and see what's going on. Uh, Cause this, mm-hmm. this album can, you know, as, as you can expect was very divisive uh, yeah. at it, at its time. Um, my favorite portion of the album though, is mm-hmm. the cinematic. It's not, if it's dead, we kill it. Synthetic love and hate fuck run. Mm-hmm. Bro. Crazy. Crazy fucking run. Crazy. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hate Fuck is one of my favorite motionless songs, I think. Um, mm-hmm. Shit goes fucking bonkers. Um, yeah. As well as uh, Synthetic Love. I mean, honestly, that that run right there gets me excited every single time. Um, I could listen to that on repeat a million times. I have already, and I could do I it a million say, more times. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But I, like, and the tracks I didn't name are solely yet again to save me from um, not naming every single song on the album. Because as I said, I argue there is not a single skip on this record, especially the deluxe edition. You want to argue the original version? Unfortunately, the the version of America on that album can get a big fat skip. It sucks a little bit. So I think that this album is pretty solid. Um, I listened to it all morning. That, I mean, and that's what, four times? I don't know. It's because it's an hour <coughs> long. Um, so it's definitely not the, the shortest album ever. But I mean, I'm, I'm all for fucking hour long albums. You know, bring Rem- them back. Remember, honestly. people at this time still had an attention span. It's crazy. TikTok wasn't a thing. Yeah. Reels weren't a thing. MySpace miss- was well, still, the, still a thing. Vine was about to happen, though. So that's kind of where the decline <laughs> came from. It's crazy how we started with seven seconds. And now it's like... It's whatever. Damn, we were fucked from the beginning. Um, I think how it opens is perfect. Um, I think uh, Black Damask and then in parentheses The Fog is a great opener. I really like... It's not an organ. It's Is it an organ? It's like, you know, the fucking vampire 
ass sounding mm-hmm. fucking keys or whatever. Yeah. Really like how they use that in the song. Um, it definitely fits their vibe and I think their look at the time. Now they're they're still kind of they look the same, but they're a little less like seen angsty. They're just kind of like alternative looking now. They chilled out a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's a great song. I fucking love it. Devil's Night is another great song. America is fucking crazy. Big fan of that song. Massive fan of that song. Honestly, just the the what is fuck that's sick. No, five track run from Black Damask to the Divine Infection are some of my favorite songs off of the album. Puppets two, the rain is fucking incredible. Okay, so I got the numbers wrong. My my screen is cut off a little bit. I mean, you know how my fucking you know how my setup yeah, is. I've so seen I'm, it. I'm, it's a train wreck. I'm, wor- <laughs> I'm working with sure. I know. Puppets, uh, fuck. Puppets, no cinematic cinematic fuck cinematic did not like that song at all i thought it was corny i thought it was corny as hell not a fan but that is um that is literally the like a staple of motionless and white is having corny fucking lyrics there's there's a song it was too corny there's a song on graveyard shift not my type dead as fuck too that is so corny that when i was getting in the band i was like maybe i should just stop you know, maybe now's a good time to. So I'm to just throwing out. it out there. It's always been. It gets worse, is what you're saying. <laughs> okay, great. That's so great to hear. Um, on album two, uh, so yeah, that's my take on uh, cinematic. Yeah, I just think it's corny as fuck. I could not get into it. Um, if it's dead, we'll kill it. I thought it was just fine. Um, I synthetic love. I really liked hate fuck. I thought was good um underdog was good infamous i did enjoy it but i think you nailed it it's not really like a closer closer Mm -hmm. so could have been better um i do think that fatal was the closer Mm -hmm. um i don't know why it wasn't on the original should have just been there guys it's not too late re-release it boom you know remove the remixes though like you can fully remove those remixes (laughs) um Honestly, the America remix goes a little crazy. I did listen to it. Yeah. I listened to that one a couple of times. I was like, okay, yeah, I'll let, I'll let it slide. I'll let it slide. Um, overall, I think the album's great. Um, Production-wise, even though this is the remastered version, mm-hmm. and I texted you, I said, dude, yeah, this does sound like shit. And then I realized, I was like, oh, wait, this is the good version. Shit. <laughs> so still, to me, it's not my favorite um, type of production. Mm-hmm. Um I think it sounds just fine. It sounds like how it should in that era. Um, it was put, also it was putting a band aid on what was an absolute train wreck instead of yeah. being able to completely redo the album. Yeah, exactly. So it's you know it's coping. They're mm-hmm. doing the best with what they have, you mm-hmm. know. Um, so I think with that in mind, I think it's fine. It's so weird. There were a couple tracks on here. I listened to it like five times. Couldn't tell you which ones, though. But there were, like, two tracks on here that sounded like it was written by Black Veil Brides. And then I was like, oh, they came up in the same time. So this is just the sound of that era, I guess. Oh, and then they toured together, like, three times. So it's like, okay. times, especially around that time. Yeah. Yeah. They were fucking two peas in a pot. So I was like, okay, this is starting to make sense. The whole scene thing now, I'm Mm -hmm. starting to get it five years into um, actually being in it. (laughs) So interesting. Great. I think it's a great album. It's a lot heavier than Creatures was, in my opinion, Mm -hmm. Um, because as you said, they were kind of trying to step out of the box. They weren't trying to be just the traditional um, cookie cutter metalcore of the time. Uh, So I think they did great on that, but it didn't hit respectfully. I thought it was I thought it was good, but it didn't give me the same excitement that I got with Creatures. So I wish they didn't feel rushed because maybe it would have given us a better product, Mm -hmm. a product that maybe everyone was happier with more, you know, uh, they felt less pressure or, you know, um, whatever. It's just, I, I thought it was just good. You know, it was solid, not mad. I, I don't think any of the songs like fully sucked. It's just cinematic, just corny, you know, and that's just fine. I'm I'm excited to hear more and, you know, rank them next to cinematic by the end of the, the fucking review series. And we'll we'll see which one's the corniest. Pretty sure Werewolf is going to be on there, but it's yeah, okay. they, it's okay. they they uh, they have not uh, stepped away from the corniness. There's they, they always got to have it on there, which is great. It's like endearing. It's like it's always going to be there, you know, Feel reliable. It's, exactly. Damn right. Yeah. yeah. 
Mm. Yeah. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, have not always been like the, the biggest fan of the production, although I think it suffices. Like it's, Mm -hmm. it's fine. Especially I feel like, you know, for the, the kind of record that they were aiming for with it being a little bit more industrial, even working with one of the producers that had worked on some of Manson's Mm -hmm. earlier stuff and trying Mm -hmm. to kind of go a little bit more in that lane without going all the way into like a Manson or a Rob Zombie. Um, Mm -hmm type sound i think that um you know they 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 nail the fusion um Mm -hmm. pretty well and and as i've learned i am through the podcast and and whatnot i i enjoy i enjoy the industrial sounding bands so it Mm -hmm. it would make it makes sense to me why i uh wound up enjoying this album as much as i did Mm -hmm. um but yeah i'm a i'm a big fan of it as i said one of my one of my favorites uh from the band and I'm glad that even though they have all of these negative emotions towards the record, um, mm-hmm. they still pull out a song or two, at least on occasion, uh, when yeah. they're when they're touring. Um, I have been able to hear a small handful of songs off this album uh, across oh, yeah. my times getting to see the band, and uh, it's always been a surprise because mm-hmm. the one time uh, they were kind of just winging the set list as they went, um, like they had practiced a whole bunch of songs and then would put mm-hmm. together the set list every night, their tour post-COVID, mm-hmm. and then yeah. uh, on this last tour they did, they were um, flip-flopping Hate Fuck with another song, and New York mm-hmm. City just so happened to be one of the nights they played Hate Fuck. So pretty fucking, pretty fucking awesome. Pretty um, huge. Yeah. yeah. Pretty, pretty huge for me. I'm hoping that, uh, I'm, I'm hoping that they pull out a couple of these tracks after they play reincarnate in full this, the uh, next weekend. Um, mm-hmm. that'd be huge for you. Be huge, huge be huge. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I enjoy this record and, um, I am, I'm glad that you think it's okay. Yeah, good. no, good. I didn't say okay, I said good. It was just okay. I'd be like, it was just, I don't get it. Mm-hmm. I don't get it. I I liked a lot of the tracks. Yeah. A-side, fucking great. Incredible record. That's that's the side that stuck with me. Yeah. I will most likely revisit it because America, that song is just fucking crazy. Yeah. I really like that song a lot. Yeah. And I know we're 12 years past the anniversary and it's no longer 10 years, but a, a 10 year anniversary show would have been great, guys. Just throwing it so, out there. What comes after 10 year anniversary is usually 15 year anniversary. So yeah, I think I, I bought the vinyl, the 10 year anniversary vinyl, but mm-hmm. like a show would have been great. I would have traveled for that. Like yeah, I am three for years, reincarnate. You could travel. <laughs> I mean, wait, how many? So it's, it's just now 12 years. Yeah. So three years. Yeah. They're probably going to do a tour for you. Well, what the fuck? Fingers they crossed. they couldn't Fingers have done crossed. that. They couldn't have done the show. They they did the live stream for Creatures because Creatures was 2020, 10 years. You got to remember 2022, they were booked. I don't care. Booked and busy. Yeah, they, they did not have time yeah, for that. I don't care. I they don't were care. busy doing fucking, fucking, I keep wanting to say hello, like a Trinity of Terror for the rest of their fucking lives. Yeah, well, like, Trinity of Terror, they should have billed one of them as the infamous uh, tour. Like how they did with fucking Thanks Killing for Inc. Like, exactly. That was so New York City should Honestly, have been an no, infamous I was show. Jealous. <laughs> yeah. <I'm... laughs> Come on, guys. I was there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They should have been like, what show is uh, Shane at? That's the one that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We'll do that one. We'll do that one. Okay. Ridiculous, yeah. man. That's um, cruel that they didn't that they didn't do that for you. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But these are our thoughts on uh Motionless and White's 2012 album Infamous. Next week we will be diving into Reincarnate. Funnily enough, the week that I will then be seeing it performed live in full twice. Um, so that is very exciting stuff for me. Falling from hell, yeah. falling from grace. That song I love is that awesome. Yeah, I do find um, that out. So I'm I'm stoked to for us to give our thoughts on that one. Other than that, you can follow us on Twitter. It's good noise, good noise underscore cast. Instagram is good noise podcast. Facebook is good noise pod. TikTok is good noise podcast. YouTube right here is good noise podcast. Audio streaming services, good noise podcast. Patreon is patreon.com slash good noise podcast. Subscribe to us here on YouTube. It helps us out a ton. Um, a ton. Yep. Check out our review of creatures and stay tuned because we will be diving into the rest of the albums over the next handful of weeks. Um, mm-hmm. But I have been Shane. I have been Glory. And we have been the Good Noise Podcast. See you next week. Bye. Bye.